I believe Rio is here. Rio, are you still on here? Rio. Okay. Well, this is uh, this is where we are. Um, basically, I had a chat last night uh, with the boys, of course. You know, we were out hanging out, stuff like that. And, um, you know, the boys were sitting there listening to, like, we were sitting down and, and um, you know, talking, politicking, socializing, and one of the boys threw on a Jeezy DVD, you know. And young Jeezy DVD was talking about his life growing up as a dope dealer and all types of stuff like that and how he had so much money, so many cars, jewelry, et cetera. Then we started watching the Shorty Low. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Shorty Low. Tanisha, you might know who Shorty Low is, though. Yes, and all that. Okay. So, you know, we they started listening to him. And it amazed me. It really amazed me how, Sorry. you know, how somebody could sit there and, like, fantasize and be amused and so amazed on, you know, these rappers, like the trap rappers and how much money they got and stuff like that, but there's no message behind it. The only thing that they're saying is, you know, how much dope they're selling. You know, they do small things for the community, but ain't none of them do not one song to glorify God or or say anything about God. So we got into our argument. Right about that because you know I'm passionate behind you know people uh, not talking about God, not saying one thing about you know basically what God does for us each and every day. But they could sit there and listen to these trap rappers, you know, rap about how much dope they sold, how much you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, you know, y'all, you know. Why are y'all sitting here listening to it like y'all worshiping these dudes, but y'all can't say one thing about God? And one of the people was sitting there saying that we worshiping a white Jesus, we worshiping a white man, you know, and they started. No, we're, no, we're not. Huh? No, we're not. They said Jesus is black. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying the point is that that's not the point of the color. The point is. And what I'm trying to make it a, a, of the situation is, is that our men, right, are finding every other excuse to draw Not away from God. So they're using, especially black men, are using the white man theory in order to run from God because that's the easiest way to run from God. Oh, I ain't worshiping that white man, and they got the they got it inside their heads. They've been fooled inside their heads that, you know, black in black churches, they're putting up white Jesus. I say white churches don't even put up Jesus anymore. They put up the symbols, but a lot of white churches don't put up, you know, a white Jesus or what color Jesus is. So at the end of the day, it really don't matter. You know, but people have lost track of it because racism is so popular right now. It's so huge, and it's it's so much. It's passable. Do you get what? Do y'all get what I'm saying? Like you can pass on racism. You know that's the biggest excuse in the world to uh, to be to not apply yourself within life just because of the white man this and the white man that and you know stuff like that. So what I wanted to do this morning to get on topic is I want to pray for these men once again, and I want to pray that tomorrow, I basically want, you know, the non-believers to show up as well, not just the ministries and stuff like that, but we basically want to attract these non-believers, and that's why I do things like that, so that they can come in and they basically can see what's going on in the church, what's going on in the community and how people are applying their lives with God instead of making excuses in order to draw away from God. So that's my plan this morning on prayer call. 
So I have one of the boys on the phone because he wants me to pick him up in a little while. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, you know, Judy and Jen, and we all probably going to get together, and we just going to pray with him while I pick him up. But um, we're going to go ahead and start this prayer call. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. As we come about you this morning, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for having us all together to pray to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. But you know what I'm trying to do within the kingdom, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. You know what's going on, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says that these days shall come where people will draw away from you, where people will idolize others, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, where people will have all types of theories about you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, in order to not bring you within their lives, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. You said this within the Bible that people aren't paying attention to, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I might not be a Bible scholar, but I see it clearly. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, what's going on, Heavenly Father? So what I want to do, Heavenly Father, I want to pray to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, to keep using me, Heavenly Father, as well as single, saved, and serious, Heavenly Father, as well as fashion of mind, fashion of figure, Jennifer Cook, Heavenly Father, as well as stolen lunches, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, to attract these men, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, who have no goals towards you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, For we know, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that the idea, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, is bring the church to the streets and not the streets to the church, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, because the streets ain't going to church anymore, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So we just want to take this time, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, and ask upon you using everybody on this prayer call, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, to honor your kingdom, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, and bring people to your kingdom, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Please give us strength. Please give us courage. Please give us knowledge, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for Myron, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, who fell in the situation, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, of basically, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, in a situation where seeing somebody get killed inside his shop, Heavenly Father, or not within his shop, Heavenly Father, but seeing them dying in his shop, Heavenly Father, running from their store, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, in his barber shop, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. For we know what type of person Myron is, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. And that's the last thing that he wants to be around and surround himself with, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So I just pray that you cover that brother, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Spiritually, Heavenly Father, draw his attention to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. And just let him know, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that those are signs that you are showing him, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, to apply his life to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for a new location for him, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. For I pray that, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that the people that are not benefiting to his barbershop stay away from his barbershop, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. For we have a good guy, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that's trying to apply, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, his life mentally, Heavenly Father. But we're trying to get him spiritually, Heavenly Father, to where he knows God and only God, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, for everybody who fell victim to what happened yesterday, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. For we know you have a plan out out of it all, Heavenly Father. It may not look good. It may not feel good. But you have an ending result to everything, Heavenly Father. When the enemy tries to distract us, Heavenly Father, you have a better plan, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. But somebody told me, Judy told me, that the enemy might know your past and present, but he'll never know your future, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So I just know, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that he's doing everything he can to attack each and every one of us, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, because he's scared of our future, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So I just pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for everybody who needs prayer, Heavenly Father. I pray that you cover us tomorrow, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, as we try to bring churches and ministries together, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We try to bring everybody together, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, even the non-believers, Heavenly Father, so we can come to as a unit, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, so people can get a better understanding of how you work, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, 
<laughs> of what you're doing in the city of Charlotte and as well as the community, what you're doing through Single Saves and Serious, the personal life experience, what you're doing through Jennifer Heavenly Father, what you're doing through Tanisha Heavenly Father, and what you're doing to Toya Heavenly Father and everybody else who's on this line, Heavenly Father, who's not telling us that they're on this line, but this on this line, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I just pray you are doing everything within your power because they wouldn't have called this morning, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, if they didn't need you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So I just pray for our needs to be met, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everything that you've done for me personally, Heavenly Father, for this new job opportunity, Heavenly Father, being a supervisor, Heavenly Father, after so many years, Heavenly Father, for I so not deserve it, but you gave it to me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. And it wasn't hard, Heavenly Father. I didn't get a headache, Heavenly Father. I didn't get stressed, Heavenly Father. For all of that, Heavenly Father. I just pray, Heavenly Father, and I just want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything, every blessing that you did within my life, Heavenly Father, within all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We thank you for being on the prayer call this morning. We thank you for taking this time out and being with us as we bring forth the word as we end the end of the week. I always like to um, quote a scripture in my scripture this morning. I'm about to bring it back up. It's very important to us, and it ties into what what we're saying about um, reaching those. And it says, it's actually from 2 Corinthians 5, 19 and 20. It says, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them. And he has committed to us, Listen, he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, that is, restoration to favor with God. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. We as Christ's representatives plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Children and loved ones on this line, that is our purpose here. Well, whatever we're going through is to help us be ambassadors for Christ. All the pain, all the things that have not been good are to serve as a way to connect to somebody who may be suffering from the same thing. And therefore, let them understand that we are ambassadors. We reach out to them on behalf of God. That scripture is very, very clear. If we ever want to know what is our purpose, beyond reaching the desire, the gifts that he's given to us and his talents. But we're always ambassadors for Christ. And I just want to go ahead and usher us into prayer with that thought. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we are in the land of the living. We thank you, Lord, that we are not in hospice. We are not in the hospital. We're not in ICU. We pray for those people who are Heavenly Father because they are your children as well. But, dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to pick up our phones, go off to jobs, and be here and present, Lord, for your word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you've done in our lives up until this point. Whether we understood the purpose for it or not, Lord, I thank you for it, and I thank you for what we've been through. You said that all things work together, Heavenly Father. And while it is difficult for us to understand all things, the negative things, the negative people, the toxic things, the hurtful things, the grieving things, Lord, we understand that all things work together according to your plan. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've already gotten us through. We're all here in our right mind, Heavenly Father. Ain't no one calling me from the mental hospital, Heavenly Father. So we thank you that we've all gotten through what we've already been through. And the devil has not destroyed us. Our circumstances have not destroyed us. So I thank you, Lord, for those on this call because you have brought them to see another day. Dear Heavenly Father, there may be those who are sick in their body. You can hear my voice, Heavenly Father. My voice doesn't like the cold weather. 
but I continue to praise you, whether it sounds like a frog, whether it sounds like Charlie Brown, but I continue to praise you and lift you up, Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, I thank you for everything that you've done for us this week. I think that you brought us to the end of another week, Lord, as those who have prayer requests, and we didn't give a chance for them to say anything, but I did have some prayer requests in my inbox, people in pain, Lord, people going through medical issues, Lord, so I ask that you remove the pain, Lord. I ask that you rebuke the enemy of illness, it was illness, within illness, Lord. I thank you for our doctors and our specialists. Guide them to help the people that are calling out to them for help and for deliverance, Heavenly Father. So I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in the lives of people, Heavenly Father. As we go into this weekend, and those who have events, like we have an event coming up, but those who have events coming up, I ask that you bless them. I ask that you pour out your spirit, that people will see you, Lord, through us, Lord, in what we do. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to reach out to people. I thank you for the opportunity to make a difference, that each and every one of us can make a difference in the life of someone else, dear Lord. Dear Lord, as we go through this weekend, watch over us and our families. Keep us safe on the roads, Lord. Keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Bring opportunities that will further our causes, our outreaches, our ministries, our businesses, Lord. Bring the opportunities that will bring glory to you in the name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for our children today. Some are getting out early, some are not, but I cover our children today, Heavenly Father. Bless their minds and cover their minds. Keep them from the bullying and the, and the violence and any kind of sexual predator, dear Lord. Watch over them and keep them safe. Bring them home to their families and, and all the perfectness and their innocence, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're going to do in the future of 2017. We're literally at the end of the, the beginning, the end of the first week, uh, the second week, excuse me, of January. Time is flying, Heavenly Father. Time is going by so quickly, and so we thank you for what you're able to do and what you have planned for the rest of the year. We look forward with faith, Lord, for those things that we do not see, and we believe it in God that you're going to bring those things to pass that we have in our hearts and we hope for. Dear Heavenly Father, if there's anyone on here that needs encouragement, Heavenly Father, please go and encourage their heart. Don't let them look at their circumstances. Don't let them just focus on who left and who didn't stay. Heavenly Father, don't let them look at the people who don't understand their gifts and their callings. Heavenly Father, help them not to focus on the ones who try to take advantage of what they're doing. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you right now that you're going to encourage each and every one on this line. You're going to bring them up, and you're going to let them know that they are loved, that they are needed, and that they are important. And I ask all these things, Lord, in the precious name of our our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Is there anyone else who would like to pray with us this morning? Don't be ashamed who's on the phone, who's listening. You know, just go ahead and, you know, talk to God. Prayer is just another sign of talking to God and, you know, uh, with others who believe in in God. We all pray together. We all come together as one because the Bible talks about two or more of the scaffolds, the Holy Spirit shows up. So if you really want the Holy Spirit to show up, don't be afraid to pray and ask God for whatever request that you have or just tell him how thankful you are towards how much he's given you so far when he didn't have to give you anything. So this is a moment of praise and worship. You know, as we come together before the weekend, before you go to work, before whatever you're doing throughout the day, we're all coming together and we're praying together. So if anybody has any prayer requests, if anybody wants to pray, be sure to pray. Anybody got any praise reports, you know, you're welcome for that too. Good morning. This is Tori. What's up, cuz? Hey, how you doing? Good. I just um, I want to thank y'all for that that prayer, and I just want to um, thank God for um, 
my son's recovery thus far, um, and it doesn't look good. It, it it doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. I'm going to be honest. Um, I just want you all to continue to keep Ranik in prayer. I found out yesterday when we took this two-hour ride that he has to undergo surgery, another surgery. So I just ask that y'all keep him in prayer. Will do. Will do. Could you give us your son's name? I can, yeah. Jamil. Renique Edwards. Renique. Mm-hmm. Tori, stay encouraged. Um, I don't know if she's on the line, but um, one of our dear friends, Roseanne Fagan, went through a very difficult time of recovery with her daughter. Yes, and Lord. Okay, she is on the line, and so yes, I am. I'm glad she is here to encourage you. Stay faithful. I know sometimes those reports do not look good. I know that there might be another surgery, but we're going to we're here to continue to encourage you. And Roseanne, if you wouldn't mind holding her up in prayer, you knowing Amen. and understanding what she's going through. Absolutely, I'll be more than honored to. Um, my daughter is on, she's going into surgery number 13 next week. Um, that's her. And then on the other night, a um, couple days ago, my youngest daughter, um, blood pressure was 234 over 142, oh, um, oh, had a stroke oh. in Atlanta, had a stroke in Atlanta, and got out of the hospital the very next day with four prescriptions, and they said that they couldn't find anything wrong with her, no damage at all whatsoever. Jesus, okay. Well, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his Mm -hmm. name, he would be in the midst. So I know he's in the midst on this morning. Even as you are going through that with your child, just understand that you have got to believe that God is who he says he is, and he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the one that healeth thee. Amen. And we know that with God, all things are possible. Only thing we need to do is just keep the faith and believe and just continue to pray and fast and ask God because it's only through him that this can be done, that things can come out the way that you want it to. So, Father God, we just thank you right now, God, that you are a healer, God. You are the healer that heals thee, Lord God. God, we thank you right now, God, that you said in your word that we can look to the hills from which cometh our help. God, for all of our help comes from you, Father. And, God, we stand in agreement, Lord God, with this young lady, Lord God, that we know, God, that all things are possible through you, Lord God. God, because you loved us, you sent your son, Jesus, hallelujah, to to die, God, that you took the sins, God. He bore those, God, so that we can be healed, God, so we can be saved, God, so we can be delivered and set free, Lord God. And so, God, we thank you, God, just like the man, God, that was at the pool of the me, Lord God. He didn't have to wait for the water to be troubled, Lord God. All he needed to do was to believe. So, woman of God, I'm telling you that it, when you believe and begin to know that God is going to do everything that he said he was going to do according to his word, it shall be done in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we thank you in advance, Lord God. We praise you in advance, Lord God. God, we just thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Believe God. Good morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that call. God knows what he's doing when he has us on these calls, Lord. He orchestrates and organizes, Lord. I thank you, Roseanne, so much for that. You're a mother who can understand a mother's anguish over this situation. And I thank you for lifting up this morning and lifting up Monique. And if I can just say this, sweetheart, listen, I'm not telling you that you're not going to feel some type of way and feel a whole bunch of emotions because you will. 
I've been going through this since June the 21st, and we're still going through it. But that's the thing about God that's so lovely that we seem to forget. It's called going through. But as long as we don't die right there, we're still going through. Mm -hmm. So that means he's given us continuing opportunity to continue to go through it because he has something greater waiting on the other side of through. And I thank God for that. So you go ahead, have your emotions. It don't feel good. No, ma'am, it sure does not. Do you feel like sometimes you're just losing your mind and, Lord, why I got to go through this? Yes, ma'am, you sure do. And don't let nobody tell you that you're not going to have those type of feelings because God made you with emotion. Thank you. Thank you. He made you with those same emotions. So we do feel and we do go through. But all I can say is continue to go through and don't get stuck right there. Amen. That's all. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Roseanne. Thank you. Thank you. Child, we will continue to hold you up throughout this week. And please let us know. You don't have to wait for the prayer call. You can reach out to me or uh, Chuck or anyone else that makes themselves available, please. Because it is by standing with each other, it is by supporting each other that we get through, okay? We are not meant to get through alone. So if you need prayer throughout the week, if you need prayer you know, in the late evening where you feel like, I don't know if I can go another step, please reach out. This is what the body of Christ is supposed to do. We are really supposed to be here for one another because life isn't always easy and our emotions are real. I'm like, Roseanne, please don't let anyone tell you you're not supposed to feel as a Christian that you're not supposed to feel. If our Jesus, Lord, and Master could weep and cry out and suffer, he knows what we go true. Mm-hmm. He knows what we go through. So your emotions are real, but we stand here to support you. Okay? That's why we're here. Okay? I, I love you. God bless you. Mm. Amen. And Chuck and, and, um, Chuck and um, Judy, anytime, if, if she calls, because like you said, I am a mother that went through it and still is going through it. So if she calls, she needs my number. Y'all please give her my number. I will. I will. Will do. She's on. Uh, I'll make sure she gets it. She's on Facebook as well, Tori Dukes. Tori, give okay. Me a... I'm sorry. We'll connect with that's her my, after the prayer call. That's you my know, daddy's that's great that. niece. Of her. Yeah, that's his. Um, yeah, that's my daddy's cousin, great so. niece, and I can okay. tell you, I can tell you firsthand that um, you know, God has a plan. Yes, you know, he does. You might not see it. It might not feel good. Come but on. In results, you have to realize that there's a plan Come on. everything that you're going through. Come on. You speak know, that. That's, that's one thing that you got to realize. Now, that's true. You know, it might not come basically when it's supposed to come in your hands, but it's coming at the right time with you. Mm-hmm. And, I had and it may not come the way you think it's going to come. Come on. Yeah, exactly. It might come differently. You know, Amen. It's, it's just like when Daddy passed, right? And I was sitting there and I was just praying, keep Daddy alive, keep Daddy alive, keep Daddy alive. And God was like, it's time for him to go home because it's another plan. He has another plan now. That plan wasn't what I wanted. I didn't want Daddy. I still wanted Daddy here. But he was like, Daddy is not yours. You know, at the end of the day, he is not yours. He doesn't belong to so we always have to realize that we do we do not belong to each other. We belong to him. Mm-hmm. And one thing that we got to realize is he's always going to cover us as his children. Amen. He's always got another plan for us as his children. He might not. It, it might be a plan for your son to be in this situation, but it's all for the glory of God. Because God can restore everything, and that's all it is, is going through restoration. It might not be uh, physically. It might not be a physical recovery, but it's a spiritual recovery. And that's one thing that we got to keep in mind. You know, um, what I had to do, one of the things, one of the things that I had to um, realize and come to terms with after about uh, – two or three months of crying and screaming and and blaming 
everybody else, I had to realize, and I told my daughter, I said, you know what, think about it like this. God trusts you enough to allow you to go through this situation to make a believer out of yourself as well as somebody else. He loves you and he trusts you just that much to say, you know what, this person is not going to leave me, this person is not going to fail me, like he did Job. He told the devil, he said, you can touch his body, but you can't take his soul. Come on now. So God trusted him just that much. Now, that's, that's something special right there. He loved you enough and trusted you just that much to allow you to go through this thing because he knew that you would not fail him in the time of testing. We get weary? Absolutely. We cry? Absolutely. We want to blame other people? Absolutely. Mm. And that's okay. But he trusts you enough and loves you enough to allow you. He did Job. And what did Job say? Though they slay me, yet will I trust them. So trust God in everything, in all situations, all situations. It don't matter what. If you need me, call me. I'm here. I, I can't give you nothing but scripture and the realness of what I felt like. So that's why I said, don't let nobody tell you that it ain't real because it's real. Don't let nobody tell you that it's wrong to feel that way because the devil is a lie. I don't know about them. They might not be going through that, but they've been through something, and they had feelings and emotions because you have them. That's how God made you. He designed you that way. But just don't allow them to take over your life. Just continue to trust in him. And, Tori, this is Jennifer. You know, the Bible reminds me, and I was just sitting at my desk at work, and the thought came to me. We have a high priest that has been touched by our every infirmity. Come on now. Though, you are now. though you are now feeling this in the physical, Christ has already taken it on in the spiritual. Mm. So as you're going through, as Minister Roseanne just said, as you're going through, don't get stuck. You know, the word of the Lord says, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will Come fear on. no evil. Mm-hmm. So walking is movement. It's action. You know, so you take whatever action you need to get your yourself through this process. Surround yourself with people who are going to love on you, people who are going to support you, people who will be there to help lift some of the heavy burdens. Amen. Like she said, you don't have to do this by yourself. We are a community of believers, one body with many members. Yeah, I'm not sure what your church affiliation is, where you're located, but talk to your pastor, your ministers, and, and I'll say it, if you can't get what you need from the church that you belong to, then Come we on. might need to pray that God see you where you will get the help. Okay? Come on. Because too many of us are trying to do this on our own, and this is why we find ourselves being overtaken. But, you know, I'm reminded, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I have to surround myself with the right people, the right things to help keep me on this spiritual journey. Because this right here that you're going through, I think about when I was a kid and on television, it would come on. This is an emergency broadcast. Don't panic. Don't panic, Corey. I I know it's hard sometimes, but don't don't hit the panic button. You hit the button called Jesus, and he will come to your rescue. Amen. So Every if there's time. anything else to you today, my sister, number one, know that I love you. Number two, I'm praying for you. Number three, if you need to call me in the midnight hour, mm-hmm. I live by myself. I got a four-year-old, so you can ring the phone. Now, I'm not sure how cognizant I'll be, but I'll answer, and we can mm-hmm. go to God in prayer about this thing Amen. because so many of us are going through tests and trials and things are coming our way, but I'm learning these things are coming to make me stronger. That's right. And fit for the kingdom. That's right. Amen. You know, so Amen, I want Jennifer. To cover you and your family in prayer, and all of us on this line will. But most importantly, we want to pray that God dispatch the resources and the people that you need right now, not tomorrow, but right now to help you get through this process so you don't have to walk this thing by yourself. Amen. 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 Hey, thank you all for that. You're welcome, honey. You're welcome. Like I said, after this call, don't think this is the end of it. <laughs> We're going to get checked to figure out and get all of us your contact information or send our contact information to you. This is, like I said, the body. We have to take care of the body. Where did she live? In Atlanta. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. 
In Atlanta. In Atlanta. Okay. <laughs> Got mm. so bad. And, and are y'all, are you, is your baby in the hospital? He is. He's in and out of, um, I don't know if y'all heard of Scottish Rite. Scottish Rite is a children's hospital. Uh-huh. Um, here in Atlanta. And um, they took him to the one in the children's hospital in um, uh, Augusta, Georgia, mm-hmm. yesterday. And um, because the children's hospital here said that they couldn't do any more and they mm-hmm. couldn't do what, what he needed done, that they trusted mm-hmm. the children's hospital down in Augusta, Georgia. And so that's okay. where I traveled to yesterday. And um, they aren't telling me exactly what they, they're they going to perform this neck surgery because I want to be there with him. But I got to figure out what to do with my grandbaby because she can't mm-hmm. stay at the Ronald McDonald house with me. So um, I don't know. I I I heard it, all the words of encouragement, and I and I know I know these things because I grew up with a praying grandma. Chuck, you know that your aunt Boot was a praying woman. It's just that, like you said, I I have emotions, and I feel like it. I don't know. I I just feel like I'm losing. Like. I'm a praying person, and I know what God is capable of. It's just like I'm, but I'm losing my mind. I'm losing mm-hmm. my complete mind because I'm at breaking point. I don't know what else to do because I pray and I pray. I really do. And That's when God steps in, baby, when you exhaust all of you. As long as you keep trying to do it, he can't do what he needs to do. But that, I ask you that, and that had to be the Holy Spirit, because um, there is a resource down there for you. Um, I, I need to get her phone number from somebody. I'm actually on the road driving right now, so I can't write it down. Uh, and I need to get it. It's, I'm going to have a lady call you. Her name is going to be Miss D. Um, she is actually a nurse down there. She lives in Atlanta. Um but she does a lot of um, children's work in Augusta. Don't ask me how that works because I don't know. Um, but her name is Miss D, and it's, it's my uh, youngest daughter's best friend. So I have something down there um, for you. And the only thing I heard was road trip. That's why I asked you where you were. Mm-hmm. I have to come down that way anyway because, like I said, my daughter um, down there as well. So, Lord have mercy. God is so good. Okay. That was good. That was uh-huh. good. We're going to get that information to you. We're going to support in any way that we can. Um, so I just want to tell you that, you know, I, I wasn't going through it for someone else, but I was going through it on my own when my health was so attacked and I had young children depending on me. And I, I did like Hezekiah. I just turned my head to the wall and bawled, Come on. okay? It's, it's Come on. okay to cry. It's okay to say, if you don't help me, nobody else can. It's okay. I nearly gave up my children. because and Jennifer, she's still on the line. She can vouch for that. I nearly gave mm-hmm. up my children because I believed I wasn't going to be able to do. And if I tell you that that was so many years ago, and one has now moved to California, the one about to go to Raleigh, I, I understand that moment when you are really at the end of yourself and it is okay to cry. Is it okay to get those emotions up? God takes it. Don't worry. He is not afraid of your angry words, your why haven't you fixed this yet words, why, where are you words, why do I even have to go through this? Word? He is not afraid. And mm-hmm. people who truly love God, we're not afraid to hear it either because we've probably been there ourselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I understand and I hear the emotion, and it is okay. Don't let anybody, like what I'm saying, said, don't let anybody make you feel that you cannot express your pain, it, I, you can express your pain. He understands. So we're going to get all the contact information to you. We're going to see what we can do. 
wrap some loving arms around you in the midst of what you're going through right now. <laughs> well, I know others have to have be at work and different things, so it's about 8.42. If anyone else um, would like to say anything or pray, uh, we're going to go ahead and close. Okay. Our hearts and minds are clear. We'll go ahead and close. Um, Chuck, do you want to close in prayer, or do you want me to? Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come about today, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, this Lord. morning, Heavenly yes, Father, Lord. in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Well, we know, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that you have a plan, Heavenly Father. We might not know mm. what that plan is right now, Heavenly Father, but we know it's a plan, Heavenly Father. So we just want to thank you right now in advance for that plan, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We don't have to know, Heavenly Father. We can be as discouraged, but that plan, Heavenly Father, will keep us encouraged, Heavenly Father. So I just pray that that plan that you have for Toya and her family, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you and praise you right now, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for that plan, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, because that ending result, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that glory will come out to you, Heavenly Father, and for you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Because we know, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that you allow Satan to do so many things for you to get the glory, Heavenly Father. For he thanks, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that he could sit there and and, and, and torture your name, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. He could sit there and think that he has it all going on, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. But you say, Satan, you can get tired all you want because that's all you're going to do is get tired, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So I just know, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that the glory will come to you, Heavenly Father. So, Heavenly Father, as we all come together as members, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you, praise your name, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Glory, yes. Heavenly Father. We praise you, Lord, for answered prayer, Lord. We praise, we praise you right now, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have already answered, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The answer is on the way. We thank you in every hands, Lord. We just faith. cover her in prayer. We cover her in love, Heavenly Father. Mm-hmm. We cover her in obedience, Heavenly Father. We cover her in hands, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for Roseanne, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, who is yes. willing to give out yes. a helping hand, Heavenly yes. Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, mm-hmm. and familiar mm-hmm. with what Toya is going through, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So she's reaching out, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, to hold both accountable, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for everything that they're going through with their children, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, so they can grip, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I just want to thank you for what you're doing, Heavenly Father. You're using all of us, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Even the ones that are not saying anything, Heavenly Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, afraid, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for what somebody might say or do or think about them, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. You are using them right now on this prayer line, and they don't even know it. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Maybe it's a testimony for them, Heavenly Father. Maybe it's something that they're going through, Heavenly Father, and they need to hear it right now, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. How you're doing, Heavenly Father, and what you're doing in the kingdom, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. For we not know, but you know, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, how they're applying and how they're being used. So we just want to thank you for using them, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you for this prayer line, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we, want we to thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Mm-hmm. Saying, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus yes. Saying, serious, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for my cousin Toya, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you right now, yes, Heavenly Father, Father. for yes. we yes, believe, Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name we of thank Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly but Father, for this young man. Not Friday prayer call, but Monday mm-hmm. prayer call, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Tuesday prayer call, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Wednesday prayer call, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Thursday prayer call, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Or even Friday prayer call, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Some ending results will say, thank you, Jesus. Yes, we do. Thank you, Jesus, for the recovery, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. It doesn't have to be physically, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. But you restore spiritually, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So I just pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that all that connection, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that she gets more connected to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Even if she has to take away 
anything that she loves, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, to come across to you, Heavenly Father, because we know at the end of the day, you're trying to get our attention, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So I just pray and I just thank you for having our attention this morning on Friday morning prayer call in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 Dear ones, please be be mindful of the Lord. Stay close to him. If not even every hour, call out to him and know that he is with you. And Chuck, you always end. How do we end? We love you, but what? We love you, but God loves you more. God loves you more. (laughs) Everyone, go in peace and in love. Okay. We love you, but God loves you more. Yes. Amen. Surrounded by believers. Amen.